Hydraulic ROVs are based on driving high power thrusters by an electrically driven hydraulic pump. We'll look at these in about two minutes. What down there, folks? Previously, we learned that electric ROVs can carry hydraulic power units, but it's the use of hydraulic thrusters that determines if the ROV is hydraulic or not. These hydraulic motors are basically consist of a supply and return line, they're commonly called A and B service lines, because to get the thruster to spin in reverse, the incoming oil is simply switched from line A to line B. Small hydraulic motors can give high energy outputs. Typical ROV thrusters are about 300 to 430 millimetres diameter, maybe five, 500 millimetres on larger trenching ROVs. And by changing the rotation speed and the thruster blade's angle of attack and nozzle details, it's possible to achieve a range of thrusts. Typical, typical performance of a 430 millimetre thruster is what 500 kilograms bollard pull. Now remember, the maximum force of an electric thruster is no more than 120 kg. Although electric ROV manufacturers point out this is a bit misleading and no doubt we'll explain why in another issue. Power is sent down the umbilical. Typical power to work class ROV is 100, 250 horsepower. And it's normally sent down at 3.3 kilovolts. This is to be routed to the hydraulic motor and this motor drives one or more hydraulic pumps. And these pump incompressible hydraulic fluid round the vehicle in a closed circuit of steel tubing at pressures of... 250 bar. Hydraulic ROVs normally have large HPUs as standard, so this can apply power to, supply power to a range of tools. Spring-loaded compensators keep the fluid at a positive pressure, and this ensures the circuit's always full of oil and prevents water ingress in terms of accidental leakage. At strategic places around this hydraulic circuit are valve packs, and these power offtakes route the fluid to drive other equipment items such as manipulators, torque tools or rotary equipment. Signals are sent for the control pod to regulate the flow as necessary. Hydraulic ROVs tend to be used in extreme conditions so robustness is important. They're typically used by the oil industry for subsea intervention work such as turning valves using a torque tool, underwater lifting, cutting, grinding. They're often the vehicle of choice for deeper water work, such as collecting samples or placing seismic nodes on the seabed. I'll explain how they're launched and recovered at another time, but winch speeds are around 40 to 50 metres per minute, so a dive work at 2,500 metres, for example, can take hours to commute there and back. To avoid having to return to the surface for new tooling or recovering samples, it's common to use a skid stowed underneath the vehicle. Now, these can add functionality. Here, the addition of jet saws turn the ROV into a small trenching vehicle that can be used for burying cable. Skids provide additional space to store all the equipment which just wasn't possible on the ROV in the first place. It's a bit like a, a car in a trailer. It's even possible to hang equipment on the sides. Over here, you can see a rear skid on the ROV used for water sampling during the dive. If you want to know more about ROVs or subsea engineering in general, read UT2, the magazine, or UT3, the online magazine of the Society for Underwater Technology. And if you're looking at this on YouTube, click the little bell symbol at the top of the screen and um, it'll notify you of forthcoming videos. <laughs>